Anna was initially brought to me uh, for treatment of sleep apnea. She was given a CPAP machine as a young girl and basically the parents were told that's it, they're going to have to use that CPAP for life. Mum and Dad came and saw me for a second opinion and I said look definitely the CPAP is important at this stage but we want to wean her off that. And the way I did that we expanded uh, Anna's upper jaw uh, that improved her nasal breathing. We got obviously inos and throat involvement for her tonsil adenoids and then we brought a lower jaw forward using a device called a Mara. If you look at that nice palette and you'll see the initial photos in a minute, you'll see the big difference in the palate change. This is the Mara. It's basically an arm on the lower molar. So when the patient bites, it's pushing the jaw forward. And you can see now the lower jaw uh, is in a good position, which has opened up the oropharynx. Uh, we've had improvement in the nasopharynx area because of what we did with expansion and face mask therapy. Uh, now, we will get to aligning her teeth uh, when she's a, a little bit um, older, but the focus is not on orthodontics. The focus is on orthopedics and the sleep apnea. You can see the large um, adenoids and um, the class two jaw with the very narrow airway. And just from a dental point of view, there's no way those teeth would have had any space. Uh, when I graduated from orthodontic school, we were taught when you see crowding like that, you pull out four teeth, you put braces on. Pulling teeth out is going to make the jaw narrow, it's going to worsen her sleep problems. So what we've done is widen the palate to make room for the teeth, bring the maxilla forward with a face mask and the mandible forward with a Mara. So we're opening up all these um, parts of the pharynx that normally would be instructed and that's got her off her, her CPAP. So she started as a young girl in my office, you can see the overclosed vertical dimension and the class 2 bite. Um, low incisors biting almost complete to the palate. Now, you just saw the palate expansion. Have a look at where we started. High palatal vault, like a double layer of teeth. Right? So there's a big improvement for orthodontists to realize what they can do to make room for the teeth, but there's an even bigger issue for medical practitioners to understand what orthopedics can do for the management of pediatric uh, sleep apnea. If you look at the latest research, Maria has published uh, extensively on this topic. Uh, which is uh, pediatric obstructive sleep apnea uh, using oral appliances. And what she discusses in this excellent article, which is part of the European Respiratory Society's actual guidelines, is um, how orthodontic treatment in children with expansion of the palate should be one of the first lines uh, of treatment for patients, as opposed to the older approach, which was simply to put um, everyone on a CPAP. And I'm happy if anyone who's watching this wants a copy of this article to send them that because it's an excellent read that allows people to understand you do need CPAP, um, but you don't want to keep people on CPAP forever. And the benefit of a growing individual is you can actually modify the size, shape and position of their jaws to improve their airway. I'm quite happy that I don't have to wear a mask anymore. And I'm really glad that this in that I'm doing this while I'm young, and I'll be the one with shining teeth when I get to high school. We saw a lot of specialists um, on the daughter, and um, the main problem was the CPAP, the um, sleep apnea, which um, thankfully to Dr. Mahoney has been um, treated. Uh, she's no longer on the CPAP, and that's a big bonus because she doesn't need to have, you know, have use it for life, as we were initially told by the um, initial sleep doctor. Um, yeah, it's been uh, three years now and um, she's, she's all smiles.